My next demo is a little different. My client had suffered from ingrown toenails and her doctor encouraged her to have her toenails removed. Well, here's the results of that. She has a nail bed, but no nail plate. <laughs> this client has expressed that if the doctor had spent more time educating her on the complications and how her feet would aesthetically look, she would have not gone through with the surgery. If your clients are suffering from impacted or ingrown toenails, I encourage you to check out Erica's OniFix Education. This is a non-invasive nail correction system that is cleared by the FDA and within our scope as nail techs. So this client doesn't have a toenail on her great toe. How do you begin? If you're unsure about something, simply ask your client. You can ask, how have you cared for this before? Or how would you like me to approach your great toe? In this case, the client told me she doesn't feel anything and that she usually digs it out to remove the dead skin cells. Hey guys, let's go ahead and jump into our demo. The first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to sanitize my client's foot with the Poto Expert foot and shoe deodorant. This is gonna kill a majority of the microbes. And since this is a waterless approach to pedicuring, it's important since we're not washing the foot that we're going to remove those pathogens, all right? I'm gonna give that a second. It's a diabetic safe product, so it can go in between the toes and it also has a light scent. So if it's the foot's a little stinky, it's something that you're not going to um, notice. All right, my next step is then to evaluate the foot. So I'm going to ask my client how their feet feel. How's your foot feel? Good. That's good to hear. So what that's gonna do, it's gonna kinda tell me where I'm gonna spend a majority of my pedicure. What's great about dry pedicuring is it gives me the ability to customize the pedicure. So as I can see right here, as I'm mapping the foot out, we have some dry skin around the heel, which is very common. We can also see that there's a lot of overgrown cuticle on her nail plates, and we have like really hard calluses right here at the tips of the toes, all right? She has, in the past, had ingrown toenails, so she did have that removed from a podiatrist. So what we're seeing right now is just very, very thin skin, and we're gonna do some cleanup here just to make it more aesthetically pleasing. Okay, let's go ahead and jump in. The next step that we're gonna go ahead and do is we're going to use the Poto Expert Cala Softener. I prefer working with products that are urea-based versus acid, so your acids are going to be um, anything that might be labeled as a remover. What we're using with the softener is we're just spraying the foot and rubbing the product in, letting it activate, and that urea is actually gonna start breaking down the dead skin cells. Anytime that we're using any acid-based products, we just have to be conscientious of making sure we're neutralizing it as it will continue to work. But with urea-based products, you don't. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and let that sit for two to three minutes, and in the meantime, we're gonna start the pedicure service, and I am going to reduce length on the toenails as well as do some shaping. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my Boss Lady Ingrow Nippers. I really like working with these because of the flat back. I'm able to get underneath the toenail, and cut right across. What I like about this, it gives me complete control. Instead of using like traditional nippers or toenail cutters, I'm really able to follow the shape of the curvature of the nail. And even though they look really aggressive, they're so easy to maneuver and the pressure that I have to apply to actually cut the nail is so minimal. I'm using just the tip and then I'm using my thumb. I put my thumb right on top so that the toenail doesn't fly in my face. I don't wanna take big chunks. Now I'm gonna shape the toenails with a medium grit diamond file. We used to give these um, files when I was a little girl to our school teachers and our teachers would see us later on in life, years and years later at like the grocery store or just in the community and they'd pull out their file and say, look Erica. I still have my file, and I'm like, oh my gosh, you're my teacher from like second grade, why are you talking to me? Right, because teachers are obviously not humans and they're aliens and can't be taken out of their context. I'm totally joking, by the way. No, but it was cool. We tell people that they will last 500 board files, so it's very economical, it's very green, 
They can be autoclave disinfectable. So with these toenails, we have a really thick overgrown cuticle. Most of the time I would take my cuticle pusher and I would push back the cuticle, releasing the cuticle off of the nail plate. But in this case, since they're really crusty and I haven't put any product on them, nor do I want to, is I'm just gonna use my diamond long and lean bit in medium. I'm gonna use the diamond on the tip and I'm gonna take this bit and I am going to trace the nail plate, removing those dead skin particles. I'm not digging into the nail and I'm making sure I'm parallel. I do not wanna be at an angle like this because I don't want those diamond particles to actually dig and create a ring of fire in my client's toes. On a normal pedicure, I would run at 5,000 RPMs. In this case, since they are a little thicker, I'm gonna run at 10 in the forward direction. In the forward direction, I'm gonna work from right to left. And here we go, we are flat against the nail and we're just grooming the nail plate, removing those dead skin cells, setting the nail up for success. Look at them, they're just flaking off. Very, very gentle. How's this feel? This is why it's also important to use quality products and a quality professional e-file so that there's no vibration and we really have a sense of control working with our tools. I mean, look right there. Just look at the difference in one direction. 10,000 RPMs in the forward direction. We're moving the tool in an opposite direction of what the bit is spinning. This is what's taking the cuticle up and off the nail plate. We don't wanna smush the cuticle down. What we're trying to achieve is getting more nail real estate. After I've done several passes, then I'm gonna take that diamond tip and I'm pushing it into the proximal nail fold and grooming that as well. But my first objective, especially since I didn't push, I didn't use my pusher because these were overgrown and really thick and I didn't want to create a ledge. The more that you do this, the more you'll understand critical thinking of when do I want to pick up different tools and why? What am I trying to achieve? And with dry pedicuring, that is what's so great, is I book for 60 minutes and really when I'm doing that evaluation and asking my client how her feet feel, Okay, if you're doing in your service gel polish with a medium barrel, you can prep the nail plate. So in this case, if we were doing gel, I would then, while I'm doing the exfoliation, I would prep the nail plate, just remove that shine. I would not use anything less abrasive than a medium. I find that coarse diamond tools are too rough, fine is too fine, and medium is just right. Just like that. Now that we've taken off that shine, what I'm gonna do now is put my machine in reverse. Make sure you always turn it off completely. Switch it to reverse. And now I'm gonna work from the left side to the right. This is just going to open up the cuticle, so I'm lifting my cuticle up and off the nail plate. If you're running behind, this step isn't necessary, but it does just create a more uniform look. My client too is also really crusty right here. So you'll see that very common in runners, but you should talk to your clients about if they want that removed, especially the runners. My next step is to use the diamond skin bit and I'm also gonna use that larger tool up here to just soften the tips of my client's toes. Doing this cuticle work in reverse is additional. So if you don't have time, just forego it. But what I like is it's just opening up more of that nail plate, creating that depth, and also really cleaning it up as well. Perfect. I'm just softening this area. With diamond, I can do this. I would not use a carbide because diamond is an exfoliation process, okay? So it's literally using its little diamond particles and is scratching the nail as well as the skin. What your client's gonna love about using diamond is that there's no catching. So if you ever got a pedicure and your heels like catch on the carpet, well, we're not gonna have that here because we're gonna soften everything with a diamond bit so it exfoliates it and makes it really comfortable for your client. Okay, 
We're gonna use our nylon brush and some alcohol, 70% or greater, and spray the toes. We never wanna file blindly, okay? So sometimes we continue to file the feet and what we're just filing is dust. We wanna be intentional and we don't wanna overfile. That's why we're always working parallel and that's also why we're going to remove, oh, does that just look pretty? <laughs> okay, so in this case, if you have a client that still has a lot of buildup in the sinus area, and what I'm referring to as the sinus is this part of the nail, in this area. If we have a lot of that, I'm gonna use the unicorn bit in medium grit. Having this nice rounded tip with a taper barrel is gonna allow me to get into these hard to reach places. So just depending on the game plan that you've created for yourself in the very beginning when you ask your client how their feet feel, these are all things that you would put together and see like how much time am I gonna be spending on the toes? How much time am I gonna be spending on the callus, okay? You wanna make sure that you're still honoring your service time. So even if your client has a lot of work, just book them sooner for another pedicure. I can tell that I'm not getting as much exfoliation as I wanted at 12,000 RPM. So I'm increasing my e-file to 14 and I'm in the reverse direction. I'm in the reverse direction and I'm working from left to right. I'm being very conscientious to make sure that I'm not flossing my tool in between the lateral fold. I'm not going like this. And the reason for that is I do not want to damage to this lateral fold. It's very important that we keep the integrity of the nail because the folds are rails for how the nail is supposed to properly grow out. So if I'm in here and I distort how the fold functions, what's gonna happen is the nail isn't necessarily gonna grow out. It's gonna grow out wider or even possibly deeper. I have to be conscientious of this. See how I'm just getting in there and I'm cleaning up the debris or I'm staying on the skin, just exfoliating. I cannot do this with Carb I cannot do this with carbide, but I can sure do it with diamond. Diamond is safe on the skin. And that is also one of the reasons that we do pedicuring dry when we're using e-files and bits. I'm stabilizing, I'm always anchoring myself with the foot. So if my client moves, I'm in control. All right. If your client has really thick callus, like the kind of thickness where you could take a thumbtack and just stick it through and they'd be like, what? <laughs> That's when I recommend working smart, not hard. By doing so, you would use a carbide bit versus a diamond. Now, anytime you use a carbide, you're always gonna follow up with a diamond to soften and to smooth out that rough edge. Again, carbide, just to recap from earlier, is for removing and reducing. Okay, so for thick calluses, that's what we wanna do, right? But for gentle calluses or everyday callus or what I could say normal, but what is really normal when it comes to the feet is that's when we're gonna use the diamond, all right? In this case with our client, there's not a whole lot of bulk. So we're just gonna use the diamond bit. I recommend not putting your bit all the way in your handpiece. And the reason for that is while we're maneuvering it, we don't wanna be fighting with the handpiece. So have your bit out a little bit will help with the different types of angles when working around the foot. We're gonna run at anywhere between 15 to 25,000 RPMs depending on the skin type. In this case, just kind of evaluating my client's foot, I am going to run at 22,000 RPMs in the forward direction. So we're gonna go ahead and start off using the pedicure bit around the toes and finish those up before we conquer the heel. So at a parallel position, I want to maximize as much as my tool as possible. You will notice with diamond bits that there's gonna be more dust is gonna go airborne. This is why it's really important to make sure that you're wearing a mask and face covering. And easy for me to say right now that I'm not. For recording purposes, I wanted to make sure that you can completely hear me. But having some kind of vacuum system, if you're doing this regularly, is extremely important because we are breathing in all sorts of foot funk. I'm keeping the bit parallel and I'm thinning out that callus. Guys, speed is your friend. Utilize it. Do not push into the skin. You wanna maintain contact, but allow the bits and the RPMs to do the work for you. 
RPMs are revolutions per minute. That's how many times the bit is spinning within a minute. Torque is the power. Using a professional e-file has a good balance between torque and RPMs. So I do not need to dig into my client. I just am literally navigating, softening this area, and then on to the great toe. So clients usually have, especially women, callus right here on their big toe. And the reason for that is improper footwear. Our shoes are always squeezing like this. So over time, friction. We're just softening this area. If your clients really wanna see a difference, they really have to understand why the skin gets calloused. And a part of that is there are so many things, but a majority, the court, the cause is improper footwear. Anytime that we're applying constant pressure, our body is developing callus to protect it, to protect the skin. Can you see the airborne particles just traveling up? That's also why I wear a surgical cap, just because my hair, I do not wanna go home and bring somebody's dead skin cells home with me. So I'm looking for signs of when do, I know, when do I know when to stop? Well, I'm looking for several signs. I'm looking for the skin to become pink. I'm looking for it to feel warm. And I'm also just communing with my, communicating with my client for them to say, hey, is it getting warm? Sometimes people who are really crusty get warm really quickly. And I just wanna make sure I'm in constant conversation with them. I'm running at 16,000 RPMs. And when I drop to the heel, I'm going to increase my RPMs to 25. If you have clients that have a lot of breakdown in between the toes, I have recently started running my e-file at low RPMs like eight, and depending on how ticklish they are, cleaning that moist skin. But sometimes there, it's a little tickly. Just like that, like you're just flossing just to clean them out. How many times do we exfoliate in between our toes? But when we have our footwear and a warm, soggy sock, what's happening is those dead skin cells are breaking down and we wanna make sure that we're cleaning them, okay? So that's another way with this spit. This is the diamond skin bit. They are available in medium, coarse, extra coarse, and extra, extra coarse. So how do you select the abrasiveness of your tool? Well, it depends on the type of foot. Coarse and extra coarse are the most common, um, just depending, obviously, if you had an elderly lady with very, very thin skin, you wouldn't want to use something that's super aggressive like an extra, extra coarse. Then you would choose something like the coarse or the medium. But what's nice about dry pedicuring, it truly can be done for anyone. Let's go ahead and move down to the callus work. Now that I've finished up with the toes, I'm going to increase my RPMs to 25,000. I'm working in a circular motion, so if my client says there's any warmth, I can quickly pinpoint where that warmth is coming from and move on. While also, but you see how great this is? I'm not taking a foot rasp and going like this, right? I'm just sitting here in a controlled area, working my bit, allowing it to do all the work for me. If your client's ticklish, just make sure you have a firm grip on their foot, pull back the skin, and just file. Usually at this point, this is when I have seen technicians use a foot rasp to continue to go over and soften the skin around the foot, okay? In this case, why am I gonna use a foot rasp and continue to do this? I'm gonna take the same bit that I've been using to exfoliate the callus, I'm gonna pull the skin tight, and I'm just gonna go over the skin so gently and being kind to my body with still getting great results. This is always great when they have a little bit of flip-flop in their skin. We're just softening. The diamond bit is doing an excellent job at just softening and smoothing the skin. Next, I'm gonna use Poto Expert's Dry Crack Skin, and all you need is a walnut size. A product, 
and it's good to use all over the foot. If you want to use a little more for a foot massage, you can. The body's only going to absorb what it needs. I'm working the mousse into the foot. It's diabetic friendly. It can be used in between the toes. It doesn't have a oily feeling to it. And if you wear gloves and put a little more product on, you can get some good slip as well. The advantages of using a mousse product like Poto Expert is that it doesn't have that occlusive feel and residue that lotions do. So what happens when you put a lotion on the bottom of the foot is it traps all the good stuff on the outside. The mousse allows it for the foot to fully be able to absorb all of those healing and regenerating lipids. So I can use it around the feet and all over the heel. It's also a great retail product for your clients. Poto Expert should be sold to your clients so that they can continue to maintain the health integrity of their skin. When we don't have integrity in our skin, what happens as we get older and just our lifestyle is our skin loses that elasticity, creating callus. When calluses and pressure continue to build on top of each other, it starts to split the skin. The best type of foot care is preventative care. Now that we've worked in the mousse, we're going to take our cuticle oil and put it on top of the toes. We do not want to get this in between the toes. We just want to keep it on top and we are going to take the polishing ball. After we place the cuticle oil on top of the toes, I'm now going to grab my polishing bit. We're going to run it at we're going to run it at 20,000 RPMs. And what I'm doing here is I'm just hydrating this area and just creating a more soft and refined look. When you apply pressure, you're still exfoliating. And when you just glide over it, you're polishing. I just feel like this gives a really gentle look. So now that we've applied the oil, we've softened the cuticles, I'm now going to take my cleanser and I'm going to wipe the oil off of the toenails and apply my polish.